To contemplate death is to understand that life must come to an end. Death is the opposite of vitality, of breath and pulse and movement. But the idea that death occurs in a single moment isn't quite right. What seems black and white is now understood to be a series of events. Death is a process. We understand this process through the instruments that we engineer to peer inside of our own bodies. And as the instruments and methods evolve, our definition of death changes. Death in mammals was historically grounded in what we could see and hear and feel. We see and hear breathing cease and feel the heart stop beating. As circulation of oxygen and nutrient carrying blood slows, the flesh and skin lose color and cool. For centuries, the only sure sign of death was decomposition, and many lived in fear of the possibility of a live burial. Early forms of CPR were used for drowning victims in the 18th century, and CPR techniques have continued to advance as we learn more about resuscitation. It was a momentous shift. The end of breath no longer meant the end of life. In the 1940s, ventilators mechanized breathing, and in the 1950s, defibrillators shocked hearts back into normal rhythm. With these innovations, a body could outlive its brain. Brain death came to define the medical end of consciousness after a historical convening of doctors at Harvard in 1968. When electrical activity in the brain ceases, the brain is no longer able to keep the body alive without life support. The eye has died when neurons cease firing. When doctors call time of death, restarting the heart is futile because the brain has stopped working. We still maintain hope with cryogenics and even more futuristic attempts at slowing or circumventing brain death and pushing the boundaries of death even further. 